Might be coming down. Seems to be going dark. It's really yeah, it's right here. Oh, amigo, is it peligroso if I come in indoor? Okay. Is, it, is, it, is it peligroso agora if I come in indoor? Yeah, it's costão de tapateada. Costão de tapateada. Pedro de elefante? Si, no. No, 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 thank you. Ah, si. Okay. Is it peligroso, Trila? No, no pe peligroso. Você pode falar com o Lidl? Yeah. Pode falar com ele. Okay. Oh, yeah. Tem um, né? Tem um. A frente, a direita? Não, fechada. Não, não. Be careful, ah, because okay. the rain. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. That's what I'm saying. So, Bikini Pelagoso, maybe yes. 20 minutes to the rain. Yes. Okay, I'll do 20 minutes to the bottom. Uh, give, give, give me your name and age. It's okay. Do you stay? Yeah, yeah, it's easy. Follow Portuguese to the bank. So, yeah. No, me. Uh, Aaron. Uh, so, yeah, the number one thing that you need to learn in schools is just psychology, philosophy, uh, a language, a language that you want to speak, because uh, that improves your cognitive function in the brain. Any, anywhere you want to live, like maybe if you want to live in Spain, if you, if you pick, if, you, if you're not going to live in England, like say to yourself, if you're not going to live in England or America, say to yourself, where else would I live if, if I wasn't going to live in England or America? And then pick that language. Um, think about it long and hard because I wish I did because I learned French and I never spent more than two weeks in France. Uh, I wish I learned Spanish or Portuguese like I've done now. Because um, everything else in college and university has just been a complete waste. Like 17 years of like primary school, high school, college, university or whatever. Not one thing have I learned. I would do anything to go back in time and just spend my time focusing on being an MMA fighter, following my heart, fo uh, being a f focus on probably being a footballer, a guitarist, something that's gonna give me something, something that's gonna give me freedom in life. Um, because everything else in college is just to, in high school, university, it's just to be, get you to be, be a consumer like, like them. Um, unless you're gonna work in business or something, unless it's your dream to work in business or be a mathematician or be a scientist or something, you need, you need that degree or whatever, then yeah. But, um, Many people don't want me. Many people, you know, your dream, dreams are real, you know? Dreams are much more vivid than just be, oh, I need, I want this job, I want that, you know, I want I want to do this so I can buy this car and get married. You know, I don't, that's, a, that's not a real dream, man. That's just being a consumer. Um, unless, you, unless you masturbate all the time, then your brain's fried and then you don't have any real ambitions. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, I think my waking point was when I learned philosophy. Uh, this is a philosophy college, and there's a quote by Bertrand Russell that said, there's no such thing as a selfless deed. I think it's Bertrand Russell, but anyway. And that just, that just made me think, there's no such thing as a selfless deed. And our whole class was taught by this this guy that was deemed crazy. He was like the mad scientist from uh, Back to the Future. He had like, the, all the hair and everything, all the, all the grey hair on the sides and all coming out everywhere. He was like, uh, he was like what's that scientist from Rick and Morty? He was like that, and the guy from... Back to the Future, and everyone was laughing. Everyone loved at him, though. Everyone loved him, and that's what thing. If you, people are laughing at you, joke, you know, making fun of you, you know, that's when you probably know you're on the right track. Because people only make fun of people, you know, they're, they're jealous of, you know. It's the same with sex and um, no fap and everything. Like people are saying, oh, lose your virginity, lose, lose this. You need your own, co you know, it's so not cool. You need to lose your virginity. Just remember this: misery loves company. You know, so people only want, if people want you to be like them and bring you to their level, that's because they're miserable. They're only trying to bring you to their level. Happy people, fulfilled people, are real people who have everything they ever want, they're alone. They're not trying to bring you, you know, they're alone, you know. They're trying to bring you up, but they like being in solitude. Like me, I like being alone, like. Um, so yeah, when people say, if I go back in time, I would focus, I would focus, you know, all my energy and I, w I would probably not, and try and not get laid, you know, try the opposite, because getting laid, you know, it just, you know, it, it's, you gotta think about what it is, what is sex, you gotta look at the universe about what, it, in terms of energy, what is it, you know? Um, don't look at it from what you learn, oh, sex is good, you need to have sex to be cool, you know? That's all what's indoctrinated into, just so you can be pathetic and miserable like them, because people who are trying to say, oh, you're a loser, you need to get laid, those people are going around and are miserable, they're sleeping with like threes and fours, and just because they feel empty inside, because um, they're not stored up any of their, you know, their semen, their seed, or whatever, you know, and just, it's... So yeah, everything you're being taught by the world, 
indoctrinated by school, media, everything. Everything is a lie. 99% of it is. Except for things probably that might be told by your mother, but even your mother is still learning. Um, your mother wasn't born in a day and age where you have all this information online about NoFap, um, semen retention, all that kind of stuff. She was raised by school and the prop, you know, the conservative lifestyle as well. So yeah, you've got to think for yourself. Think about, you know, toddlers, Tod like toddlers and animals. I love toddlers, kids and animals. Then they're the only real thing left on this planet. Um, whenever I see a kid here, I'm working out, I train on the beach, and toddlers always come up to me and go, hola, hola. But then adults trying to pull them away, go, no, no, stay away from him, you know. He's a gringo, gringo, stay away from him, stay with your own kind, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's getting worse and worse with social media day and age. Everything's becoming more paranoid. But yeah, so let's focus on using that energy to be the best you can be, be successful. It's going to be hard because if it, if it wasn't hard, you know, it wouldn't be worthwhile. Everything worthwhile is hard because it makes you feel, have a sense of accomplishment. You would want something that's easy. You took the easy path. You know, there's just no meaning in that. There's no, you don't achieve any, you don't push through any limitations. You don't change the world. You don't have any sense of accomplishment. You don't do anything. You don't have any self-pride. And that's what makes you um, feel like a man, feel like proud and, you know, so. So yeah, we just climbed that mountain. So join my tour of the video. I'm gonna watch, you'll uh, watch me climb this mountain now, just before the rain comes down, just missed the rain. Good job, if we were there now, we'd be stuck there. So good job, we just got down just in time. We'd be stuck there and probably, you know, uh, stuck there overnight. Probably wouldn't die, but you know, you never know. <laughs> you know, it might be flooded or something. You might have slipped and, yeah, things like that in Brazil. That's what I like about it, it's uh, dangerous freedom. I love Brazil. Uh, but just what other about is the nature. Be a time to work out now. Time to do my training. Swim in the sea to wake myself up. This is I need to start waking up in the morning because when I do my training, training and then you swim in the sea, it just sets you up for the whole day. You feel amazing. So yeah, that's it, guys. Like and subscribe and share. Um, if you have anything else, any if, uh, more information, check out my videos. We'll do a new adventure every day, um, and I'll say my truths about how to reach freedom because freedom's what it's all about, guys. To break down freedom. So I'll be trapped like a, a lot of places, a lot like uh, Asunshan is trapped these days. It's like a big prison. People only care about what people think, and that's the that's the the number one way to lose it, is just to care about what other people think. So yeah, it's uh, on this journey together. Let's make uh, the world the way it should be, so we can bring kids into this life and be happy and be successful and be free and get everything we want and everything we deserve. Because uh, that's what it's all about, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to another day in our adventure. Yeah, I'm still here in the same place in Paradise. So I'm usually going around the world to other different places, but I've been here way too long. Uh, usually, I like this, I use this as my getaway, like my home away from home, because uh, Rio gets a bit too, too intense, like I keep talking on about. Yeah, you can see it now, that's the island. Like when you see the, um, the city of God, you know, like the, uh, the movie, when you see those little islands in the distance on the beach. I think that's the same islands you see at Ipanema, like the famous beach. I'm not sure what's there though, if you can reach them. But yeah, we're going to climb that today. We're going to climb, uh, or we're going to, there's a trail that leads up to, it's called the Rock of the Elephant, Pedra de, de Elefante, which uh, said the rock looks like an elephant, but we're going to do what we can because it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be night time soon, in about three or two hours, because it becomes night time pretty early now. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, I'll do this video about no fap or anything. I hate that word, that term, it sounds like a fad. But we're gonna do um, semen retention, this video about my semen retention experience and everything. This beach is desolate because it's a really rainy day today. I'll do some training or some uh, swim in the sea. I did some training here last night like I do every day. Train here every day and, well, almost every day. Try and do something, um, build up some sweat. I then uh, swim in the sea uh, to get ready to go back to Rio for training. Um, but yeah, let's do the, I'll do the semen retention video and um, energy video. I'll talk about it while we're climbing this trail. You probably won't be able to get to the top because I'm just wearing sandals, so we'll just um, go as far as we can until the sun starts to set and then we come back here. I need to do some training. Today's training here and then um, swim in the sea. Because yesterday I swam in the sea here. I did some training here in the rain yesterday because it's like, this is like monsoon kind of season. <laughs> like they have the change in the season, the summer's coming. So after today, after today, after the, well, after tomorrow, it's, we've had like a week of just rain and the sun's coming. So they're gonna have like um, an intense summer season is coming up. You always know that when the change in the seasons come, um, 
it's going to be for all next week. It's going to be hot and sunny. And I think that shows that the uh, summer's here. The, well, the spring is coming. The spring is here and the summer's coming. So yeah, this is where I usually train. Uh, I was here in the rain, like at eight o'clock at night. I was the only one there. I was like guarding my bags, make sure there's no robbers here. But no robber, no robberies happen here. If this was downtown Rio, I wouldn't do that at night time. Should have a few get robbed easily. But yeah, just um. These aren't, I mean, all around it's quite charter here. You have really good mansions. These aren't the kind of nice mansions that I'm on about, but if you see me have a video, you go down more down that way, you have the really nice mansions. They said this rock is climbable. They're able to climb up it. Like you're able to look, you're able to walk up it, but I think about midway, it gets a bit steep. But yeah, the sun's not out today, so there's nothing else to do. So we'll... there's no uh, training camps here. So I'll just do my own training. But yeah, I actually feel good training um, in the rain. Obviously, probably if, if I wasn't on semen retention or no fab, I wouldn't feel good training in the rain. But like I did it training outdoors. I've always trained outdoors from now on. Like I, I can't go back to training in, in a gym or being a consumer part of the matrix um, anymore. Because I used to do that throughout all my, you know, early twenties or whatever, and I was just miserable. I felt like a hamster in a cage, always in the gym. And just you should go this way. Let's go this way, anyways. I'm not sure if this trail is dangerous or not. If there's gonna gonna have some rob robbers waiting, but I doubt it because there's no foreigners ever come here. Because uh, like I say, they always keep the best best place, the outskirts, the best places secret from foreigners. So yeah, I was training out outdoor in the rain yesterday next to the sea, and I just felt so at peace. Like in the gym, you just feel really stressful, which is good because it pushes you the stress and makes you angry and let it all out. Like sometimes um, I'm a bit like headed or you know, I just, sometimes when I come to training, I just sit by the beach and just listen to the waves and it's just so calming. And you have the, the wind blowing the sea in your face and, well yeah, it's just so peaceful. Like you can't find it, like uh, usually in England or America, when you go to the gym, you usually find those steroids heads who are usually angry. That was me, that was me in the early, you know, like 10 years ago, I used to go to the gym and I used to be like, Ugh. I used to wear a hoodie and just like, don't look at me, I'm going to angry, I'm going to kill someone, you know. Um, usually find those kind of guys in the gym in England or America. But here in Brazil, you have people who speak to you kind of, ni kind of ni nice, you know. Um, obviously not all of them, because you do get the people who are here foreigners. But it's impossible not to be, you know, just feel at peace when you're at the gym, because you have the sea, you have the feet, your feet touching the ground. You have nature, you have everything, and you're right next to the sea, you have the sun, you're outdoors, you know. Um, obviously in Apador is different, uh, whether you have the outdoor Flintstones, Spartan, oh, I don't like to call it the Flintstones, I like to call it the Spartan gym, because it reminds me of Spartan times, when the ancient times where they used proper weights and rocks and stuff like that, and a punch bag right next to the sea. And, but yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to not let the foreigners ruin their paradise, you know, like anyway, like you see in Saudi Arabia, they hated. They hate foreigners, they hate the white guys, so they don't want anyone ruining their paradise. Which is understandable. And it's kind of good, it keeps you on edge. Like here, I guess I've gotten, I've had my rest, but I can't live here because I would just get so lazy. And I've got so much to do, so I don't die with regrets one day. But yeah, this trail starts up about here. But yeah, with a semen retention, no fab. I'm always training outdoors and I just don't care. Like, I just stop caring about what people think. I didn't realize how much when I was trapped in, you know, when I was in England or America or whatever, just, how much I cared about what people think. But yeah, this is where the trail starts. I think we'll only be able to do it for about an hour because the sun might be coming down. Soon, especially going dark. It's really, yeah, it's really, you know. Hold on, amigo, is it pelig peligroso? If I come in, though, okay. Is it, is, it, is it peligroso agora if I come in indo? Yeah, costanta quatiara. Costanta quatiara. Pedro de elefante? Si, no. No, 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 thank you. Ah, si. Okay. Is it peligroso, Trila? No, no peligroso? Você pode falar com o Pode falar com ele. Okay. Oh, yeah. Tem um, né? Tem um. A frente, a direita? No, fechada. No, no. All right. All right. Be careful okay. because the rain. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. That's what I was saying. So, Pequeno Peligroso, maybe. Yes. 
20 minutes to the wing. Okay, I'll do 20 minutes instead of water. Uh, give, give, give me your name and age. It's okay. Do you stand? Yeah, yeah, it's easy. Fala Portuguese, to the wing. So, yeah. Uh, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, the guy was just saying, be careful because uh, Moto Shuva. So it's, oh, it opens, it closes at 5 pm. So it closes in a few hours. So it closes in like a few minutes, uh, probably one hour. I've got one hour, so I'll just be uh, 30 minutes because you can see when the rains come, this would be really difficult to walk. Because I mean, this, this is easy compared to, this will be easy compared to Pedro de Gavia. Pedro de Gavia was a really hard eight hour climb. This is a good exercise. Got a little warm up before training tonight when I come back. So yeah, I usually um, I usually train the outdoors and I love training in the rain. I always train outdoors, uh, have my feet towards the ground, towards the grass, and I feel alive. Like afterwards, like you, you do it now, you go to the gym and then you the next day go, go train in the rain with your feet touching the grass. Press ups, sit ups, chin ups, sprints, you know, whatever, you know, do it all. Full body workout. And then you have a nice shower afterwards, you feel 10 times better. It's like when you do foot, uh, Sunday football training or Sunday rugby, rugby game. <laughs> I was at a quiet chair where, where we just was, the beach. I'm used to doing stuff like this, but talking at the same time, holding, holding my bags and holding. Carrying the phone, it's why I'm probably out of breath. Which way should we go? <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to go all the way to the top because it's going to be nightfall soon and it's going to rain. We're in the rainy monsoon season, and when it rains here, yeah, it really, really rains. So it should be safe because there's a, a guard at the front door who's taking people's names. Last, the only time they did that was in Pedro de Gavia. And they make, they make sure you, how many people have died or how many people have come back. Because Pedro de Gavia must get a lot of deaths. But yeah, we've seen my retention. I'll continue on with seeing my retention now, just the video. But yeah, I usually train, like I trained in the rain last night and it felt like when I was back in Paraguay, I love training in the rain. They have some tires outdoors. People make excuses like, oh, I need to go to the gym, I need to pay for this, I need to pay for that. Oh, fuck off, you know. You're paying people for gym just to, just to move. You're paying people to move. That's like paying people to speak. It's, just, it's really stupid. But I've, I've got my best body and feel like, when I was at the gym, my body felt horrible because I was just obsessed with doing this machine. And I, and I was so angry and so stressed. And stress tears away the body. But then when you come here in the, in the outdoor gym, you just feel at peace, you know? You don't see those huge steroid angry angry heads. You find some people on steroids there. This is cool, this is... Yeah, you can tell this is a family walk because they have a, a trail and they have a place for people to stop and take a rest, even though it's not gotten hard yet. When Pesci de Gavia, they don't have this. This would be a cool place to live. Reminds me when I was back in Overguazi, but yeah, I was training out in the rain last night and remind me when I was in Paraguay. This is a bathroom. I think it might be a house or a bathroom. I think it might be where the, the guard sleeps in a bathroom. Yeah, when you, no one's going to come out and but yeah, um, training in the rain, I felt like Superman. I felt like Henry Cavill, you know, you see those, these, uh, these superheroes who train in the rain, or like Thor, or whatever. I, think, I, think I was training in the rain and thunderstorm, and thunderstorms in South America are so cool. Like they have lightning every five seconds. And this rain comes down. It isn't like rain in England, like you just have like a few sprinkles. Like the rain creates rivers within, like it's dangerous. Like if you have a, if you're, if you're gonna have a few days of rain, People always say, oh, stay inside, and they just do nothing because they know how dangerous it is. It's like in Argentina, the, I, was, I was working in Argentina in 2018, and in Tigre, the outskirts, it's right next to the river, and we're living in a mansion, and the house was flooded, like up to our knees flooded, and it took a few days to clean it. 
I was doing construction work there and cleaning work there, so I had to clean it all up. Took her out two days just to get rid of it all. Um, but yeah, I felt like Superman. I, mean, I, was, I was in Paraguay last year. They had a, a park, so I always don't make excuses. I just train in a park or anything. As long as you have a bar, you don't, you even, you don't even need a bar. I just train push up steps, and I feel healthy. I feel like I have more control of my body. And, but yeah, I was training in the rain and I had some tires and people were like beeping at me. But I get that a lot. Hey, what are you doing? You know, you're working out here, you know. You can't do that, you know. You're making me jealous, you know. Especially in Paraguay, you do get that, a lot of that stuff. But yeah, I was uh, training in the rain. I just felt, and then you go, I went back to my apartment because I bought an apartment last year in Paraguay, uh, rented it and it just felt really good. You feel so much more alive. It's like when you go to a football game or a Sunday rugby game. That's why people do it because after that Sunday rugby game or football game, with all the mud and the grass and everything being all over you, you feel amazing. You feel the adrenaline pump. And then I remember I used to do boxing training. I used to do the boxing training every Sunday, and I used to bike through the woods on the way back and in the rain or whatever. And it's just then I used to come back to Sunday dinner around midday and that was just perfect for me. I never feel so more, like that Sunday breakfast, never felt more tastier than anything in my life. So yeah, you gotta earn these paradises and it's good, like now I feel good, like having a breath pump in. Even now, it's just, just this warm up of climbing this. So yeah, I've been doing NoFap basically since 1999. Since I saw a film, 40 days and 40 nights. And yeah, with just heart in it, hearts in, in it. And I've always been wanting to challenge myself. Like that was the time when I got into Bruce Lee. I saw Bruce Lee and I just thought, that's my life. I want to be just like Bruce Lee. But I didn't realize like everybody wanted to be like Bruce Lee. Um, but yeah, that's not the rock. That's, I've got this trail all to myself because everyone's inside on this rainy season because they know it's going to be dangerous. No, they know when it, it rains and then 30 minutes later it's up to your ankles. It's not like rain in England, it just comes down like a heavy, heavy... It just feels like you're in a shower, you know, it's just... You're freezing and, and it was difficult to walk on the streets. It happened last week and... And it was just, you couldn't walk on the streets at all. You have to like almost, it's almost, it's almost swimmable. So you have these in these tropic countries. But yeah, I've been doing this since 1999. 2000, I started taking, and I started taking it seriously. I said to my friend, I'm gonna go 40 days without masturbating in high school. And my best friend said, you're ridiculous. Why would you want to do that? That's stupid. And these are the things you should be taught in high school. Everything I've learned in school and college and university, I've not used any of it. The only thing that's been useful is the stuff on the playground. That's kind of useful. The stuff you learn on the playground, but just... Everything in school and college has been absolutely... If I could go back, I would just concentrate on fighting, boxing, and mixed martial arts. You know, my passion. Unless your passion is in business or something, and you learn in business, which they don't teach in high school. They only teach that until university. But yeah, everything I've, every, I'm not, there's not one thing that I've taken from my, what is it, like 17 years in nursery, high school, primary school, college and university. It's just wasted. Not one thing I've, I've used. It's good if, you, if you're if on that lifestyle or you want to get a degree and use that degree to get a proper job and you have a clear mindset. This goes down, which way should we go? Banano. This is a camp this way. A camp of stairs, that's an easy path. That's gonna go all the way to the top of the mountain, so I don't think we'll be able to make that because it's gonna be raining soon and it'll be difficult to come down. Once it starts raining, that's when you gotta start panicking because within it may look like oh it's just rain, I'll have another panic about no in ten minutes it's gonna come up to your ankles and with these everywhere it's gonna get wet, it's gonna be impossible to get down. Maybe, no, we won't take the easy path because that's just, there's going to be nothing there probably. It's 
to the campus. Let's see how far high we can get to see, see some Itikwai Chowder just for a few minutes, then we'll come back down before it starts to uh, rain or the sun starts to go down. But yeah, my friend was like, what are you doing that for? That's stupid, you know, you just kind of... Why do you want to do nofap? Uh, why do you want to? It wasn't even nofap. It wasn't even called a thing by then. I think I'm, I might be the first person to ever do it, besides Josh Hartnett in the uh, 40 days and 40 nights. But I was all about challenging myself. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, I usually have these things. This is like in Pedro de Gavia, back in the mainland city. We did this, and they had uh, bars sticking out, which I actually had to grab onto. Because uh, this is going to be difficult. I've only got half of one hand because I've got bags in my hand. So I'll see if I can do it, if not. And I've got my phone in my hand, so we'll probably just leave it. We'll see how far we can get. See if we can see a view, if it's quite hard, then we'll come back down and we'll do the easy path because gonna wait, going wait all the way to the top with just one, half of one hand free, it's gonna be difficult. So yeah, I've been doing it since I've been doing, obviously I've relapsed a lot. When you're 14 or 13 or whatever, when you first start it, you just, you have composed, you don't see, you don't, you don't realize the importance of it. You just think, oh, it's just masturbating. It doesn't, my friends are right. That's the main mountain, I think. Pedro de Elefante might be that one, the famous one that I'm looking at right now. That's the one that's a view from my hostel. A little hostel, and yeah, no one climbs this. So we're still here alone. So, if anything dangerous happens to me, we're stuck here because nothing will, though. This is nothing compared to Pedro de Gavia. Pedro de Gavia was an eight hour climb, like ne near vertical, and they have they have deaths there like all the time because you see those pictures, of the, there's people hanging off the cliff. That's Pedro de Gavia, and they've they say have a sign, they say death happens here a lot. But this is easy compared to it. This is the Sicilian, Italian style town of Itacoachara, really peaceful. You can see over there to the beach that everyone goes to. Yes, this video isn't gonna be, I should be talking about NoFap and see my retention, but I've just ended up waffling. So these videos are real, I don't prepare them, I don't try and get some kind of money from them or anything, I'm not trying to sell anything. But yeah, and I've been doing it since then on and off. I took it seriously. No fat consumer retention back in, I think 2012, 2013. No, I, I think when I was 19, I started edging a lot. Not because anyone told me about it, I just, it just felt good. I think I was lost at university. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just went in it because I was kind of pressured, you know, you know, what do you do now? You go to college, you go to high school, and then what's the next step? You know, my family wants me to go to university and I really didn't want to really. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but if I, back then I would have told myself to travel the world, to learn Spanish, learn Portuguese, learn about NoFap. These things they need to teach in school. They need to teach psychology. The only important subjects you need to learn are psychology. Um, I, I learned a bit of that in college. Did like a short course of it, and that's the only thing that I that stuck with me. Psychology. Um, Learn a language, which you, if you want to live in a different country, learn one language you know that you're going to live in, or the number one country you think that you're going to live in if you're not going to live in a, an English-speaking country, and then learn psychology. And that's it, learn, learn a physical skill, learn something sport. That's the only thing that should be taught in high schools. Yeah, we'll come back down now. We'll rest on this rock. We'll, do a, we'll see what we can see when we get to this rock here. I've got my shopping. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's Pedro de Elefante. I'm not sure what's there. I might, go, I might go there tomorrow if it's still rainy. See what's on the other side. They might like have a, have a little private beach on the other side or a little camping ground. Mosquitoes as size gets me. So yeah, I've been doing no fab since 2019, practicing it on and off. And I think the most I went when I was when I was like 14 or 15, I went a week um, without no, without masturbating. Usually I would have like done edging or something, but I went a week without touching it. 
And I think I remember I was, I was probably the only one in my high school who, could, who did that, uh, especially when you're 14 or 15 or whatever. It's really hard. So, but yeah, I did it because I'm always about. I'm always, I was always about challenging myself. When I watch Bruce Lee movies, I, I want to push my body to the physical limit. I want to challenge myself. I want to be, you know, be the best you can be. I was in Scouts and everything, so all that Scouts on, I be the best you can be, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, pushing my body on my comfort zones, be being unique. Then my friends just thought, oh, you just want to be different. You just want to, yeah, it's kind of true because I like standing out. I like to um, being different always. Just felt like my life was worthwhile. And obviously it's the same with that because people just want to bring you to that level. Everything you're fed by media and everything is just to make you buy what they want to sell, uh, to bring you to their level. Almost like 99% of things, I set things fed for your, probably by your mother or your father, because they're probably the only people in the world that will care about you. These are harsh truths, I know, but it's kind of comfort comforting when you realize that no one cares about you. Like, um, there's a kind of mindset, like I saw a meme that says, no, nobody cares, but there's also a good mindset, like, yeah, nobody cares, you're free. You're free to do whatever you want. It's a great feeling, it's a great liberating. But I think when I first went through that kind of, because I, I, I went to an old boys school, so I didn't know anything about girls until I was like, 21 or whatever and that's my downside because um so yeah i wish i went to an all uh, not an all girls school that would have been cool but uh, yeah i wish i went to because i would have learned something that i would have should have known a long time ago um instead of being deluded and wasting a lot of years um but yeah but yeah everything you're fed is just to bring you to that level 99 percent of things it's kind of it's, it's, the, it's the delusions in life. It's the it's has to fight. It has to wake up. You gotta have. And at first, I was like, oh no, nobody cares about me. You know, when I first realised the truth, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares. You know, nobody cares what I do. Nobody cares about anything. Um, and I was kind of thought, oh, I was really angry about that. I was, I was like, but it's kind of liberating because it causes a lot of stress to always try and fit in. Or always try and have friends. And always try and be popular. To try and be perfect. You know, but to realise, oh, nobody cares. Who, who cares anyway? You know, nobody gives a shit. It's liberating in that because then you can just focus on yourself and your own happy and your happiness and your own money and your own goals um, and it's really liberating where I remember I was really depressed um, really scared about doing anything about leaving my own room just because I care to, too much you know about what people think and about what others think and uh, I thought you know all these people all my friends everything I've got to have a great friend social life I've got to have this but like I, I didn't realise that nobody cares nobody gives a shit you know, nobody Everybody's in this planet just for themselves, except for your mother. They're the only people that care about you. And that's liberating. That's really, because that, that, it, it releases a lot of stress. It just makes you feel free in every single way. So yeah, I was going to do this video about NoFap and semen retention and stuff, because that's popular, but I'll do that tomorrow or something. When, uh, anyway, it's back to training. I'll do my training now before the rain comes, because it looks like it's, uh, it's going to rain again tonight. Like it has done for a week. Uh, usually these places are full, but it's not when it's raining. So yeah, everything you've been fed, and t even teenagers these days, they don't realise, you, you go through a stage, even, I thought they would have realised with social media, they would have spread the thing that nobody cares, so just do what thing for yourself. Everything you're being fed is, you know, just to make you a consumer, just to make you as miserable as them, to make you trapped like them. But even like uh, teenagers and you he sees they're still waking up at like the same age, like around about the early 20s, and then they re regret the whole youth because they were just, we would spend the whole youth trying to impress the family, impress the friends. And that's why Paraguay is um, never winning anything, it's never developing. I mean, Paraguay could be the number one country because the people there are intelligent, they're civilized, you know, they're you know, much more civilized than, you know, um, but, than a lot of Brazil. But because they only care about what people think, that makes them the biggest losers of almost South America, besides Bolivia. Um, but yeah, and it's not because they're they're high class as well. They have a high a lot of high class kind of people, and they can be the winners of whole of South America. You know, if they stop caring about what people think, you know. But all they care about is what people think, and that's that's the the number one trait of a loser is only caring about what people think because they end up wasting their lives. You see a lot of them don't travel. You see these girls who have bags under their eyes, who are pregnant, getting with their own type because society says, get, stay with a Paraguayan, stay with your own kind. And they just have like, they have like three pictures a year on Instagram and like the highlight of their life is going out to a nightclub at a, fr a Friday or Saturday night. 
And I just think, geez, great, I, you know, I care. I don't want them to, to, to waste their life. You know, it's, 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 it's poisonous. It's like sickening seeing that, how they're wasting their life and they're wasting their potential. Um, that'd be a good path to go there. You can see those trees, that'd be, you'll, you'll look really small. Those are trees over there, so you'll look really small climbing those. I think, uh, yeah, that must be the other path the guy was saying. He was getting into another path. To, that's right around there, so we'll do that. Anyway, it's time to go down. Yeah, it's starting to rain now, you can hear on the leaves. So yeah, so good to be tired to come down. Because uh, we would have been stuck on that rock otherwise, because it's impossible, because <laughs> on that steep rock, I would have been stuck there because the, especially climbing in flip-flops like these, we're in leather flip-flops, so it's almost impossible to trek. When, even when it gets just a tiny bit wet, I would have slipped or I would have been stuck there all night in the rain. Let's see if it was there. This is a banyo. No, it's not a banyo. Yeah, it is time to get down because the rain is going to be really heavy soon. Get back to training in the rain. But yeah, in Paraguay I did it with tyres. I was in the park and they had some tyres. Just some tyres laying around and I was like, everyone's looking at me strange and beeping horns at me. I was there in the rain in the night time and the lightning in the background. And just, I felt like a superhero. It was great. But yeah, there's no better feeling than that. It's much better than feeling inside and feeling stressed and the bad, bad energy from people. But yeah, there's no one here. But yeah, there's no better feeling. Try it yourself. Try when it's raining outside. Just go outside in the rain. You feel like Vegeta when he's turning the Super Saiyan. You feel amazing. And then you come back inside and it feels great. Finish my day off in my favourite food place in all the world. This matzo is absolutely delicious. It's so refreshing. And we've got the vegan burger. Um, yeah, I know you're probably always saying, oh, vegan, it's like quinoa burgers. It's really delicious. It's really nice. And you get like some free um, banana chips with it. Yeah, detox juice. Yeah, no, I'm just being healthy right now. Because um, after this, I'm going to, I have like my days of tea day. I got this heart of palm thing. I've no idea. I've no idea like what it is. Heart of palm. Palmito. So I've no idea so far. Let's just check it out and see what it is. Let's check it out and see what it is. I'll eat it when I go home, but like, I'm gonna save it. Palmito is like a meat. Oh no, it's like potato or something. I really love it. It's the best place in all of Brazil for food. That's really healthy food. That's like potato, and they have ricotta and eggplant all in the, these nice pastries. It smells delicious, like a really nice bakery. So yeah, it's a good day today. Good rainy day. So we get back to the training now. So yeah, in rainy, it's quite chatter. This is the main center. Where it's not in the main center, this is where people come to surf and they hang out with the girls. You can see these are with the surfers. Surfers paradise here. <laughs> Every fish taken there. Really cool. Yeah, this is where I met the uh, 18 year old, that, well not the 18, the 30 year old that looks 18. She, uh, the white tab sex for me on the beach. If you check me out on your video, video, I'll tell you a story about that. And she, she picked me up here and we uh, went on the adventures to climb the mountains. And she said, this, she introduced me to Asai in Kupasu. She said, you gotta have it. And since then it's become like the best food ever. Brazilian tell is so cute, they're hiding from the camera. Kupasu is like goofy hair, goofy skin. It's so delicious with uh, Asai. And uh, this is where I have the vegan food and everything. In Hawaii, that's like Hawaii here, or Australia. It's absolutely perfect. But uh, anyway, I need adventure, you know, it's, Good place to come for a weekend to relax, but a uh, good place to retire. But yeah, you have to go back to the Matrix now, where the uh, the hell zone, the war zone are real. Yeah, just finished my outdoor training. <laughs> it's just a bit of rain. It's always uh, it's always nightfall straight after a train. Not because I train for like ages, but I just uh, recently been doing it uh, around 5 p.m. or something. A bit here in paradise, Hawaii, Australian kind of paradise, like the only. One of the only few pieces in Rio de Janeiro they actually feel uh, kind of safe. See, so yeah, really peaceful. There's no one around at all. Really desolate. But yeah, this is where the rich people come. Like Petropolis, Terrasopolis, over Beach. Really chill. So uh, yeah, I've travelled all around Brazil. Fortaleza, Curitiba, Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais. Lived in all around Brazil. Uh, Foz de Guazu, Belo and Rio Cambrio, Rio de Janeiro for two years, all around Rio. So <laughs> more than many Brazilians have, Brazilians came up to me and said, you've experienced Brazil more than we have, because I think Brazilians, especially in rainy day, let's say, they like, they like to stay inside and they're all about geeky stuff and they're really cute like that. But yeah, um, 
just uh, so yeah if you have any questions or anything about, all about Brazil all around Brazil or if you want me to say anything just leave a comment uh, below or like and subscribe guys and please share because uh, it really helped me out you can see the it's like a boat over there or something not sure what it is like that's where they usually the islands are where you can see from Ipanema let's see you can see yeah, the rainy season's about to end, so we're gonna go back to training in mainland Rio soon. After this Hawaiian paradise is really lush, but I couldn't imagine living here. This is where the rich, older people live, or the people come just to relax, because there's not much adventure here, uh, but it's just so peaceful. It feels like you're on cloud nine, like, just like really, um, what, how do you say, let's really escape from the world. It feels like you're dying and gone to heaven, you know, but in a good way, you know, like it feels like you've uh, escaped from the matrix here. So that's what I like about Rio. On mountain adventures, adventures in real life, whatever in the real world is just tasting sex and money and the same robotic things. But I've seen that, in all, I've said that in all the other videos. So check out all my other videos, guys. They're traveling around the world and like and subscribe. Uh, if you want me to say anything, express any more truths, I, ne I never lie. So that's the uh, that's the reason why I'm alone. <laughs> I'm always traveling the world because uh, you know, yeah, express honestly, express myself without lying. Um, where other people live, people in the Matrix who don't, who aren't free yet, they're very always lying just to get sex or money or fame or whatever, chasing the same stuff. So if you have any questions, leave a comment. I don't care about the hate. I get, I get a lot of hate, and I, I like it because it leaves me peace and leaves me alone. So let's go.